Hello everyone, this is Adam Anderson, Product Trainer at Maple Systems. Welcome back to our EV Pro training series. In the last video, we showed you how to set up data sampling to gather time series data from a PLC or controller. In this video, we'll show you how you can visualize the data you collect on the HMI, as you see here in this trend display, and how we can set this up in EV Pro. This simple example uses two channels, or two data records, which we configured in our last video in data sampling. These use simulated data written to these local word registers. Now we have a trend display already on the window. We're going to go ahead and set up a new one here and we'll walk you through each of the most important steps. First go to the data history tab and select trend display. Choose the data sampling object that you wish to use as the source of the data. Select real time or history mode. Real time gets us the latest values right away and then set the x-axis time range however you wish either time mode or pixel mode with pixel mode it spaces out each data point by a number of pixels or time uses a total number of seconds to put along the x-axis and show that much data at a time on the chart so we'll use 60 seconds for this example and we'll enable the watch line feature where we can click on the chart, it will create a vertical line at that point, and we can read the values from that exact point in time. Those values will be written out to the designated register. And since we're using two channels of data, the first value would be written into local word 202, and the next value will be written into local word 203. From the trend tab, here you can choose some frame and background color options. You can enable a grid, so we'll do that and set it up in a 4x4 grid style with the gray color for the lines. We'll show the date here, and from the channel tab, it's important that you check the box for any and all channels you wish to display. Also, when you click on a channel, you can set the pen color and style and width. So we'll go with a black pen with the one for the first channel, but we need to set the limits here. By default, it will enter 1 and 2 for you. It wouldn't show any values outside of that range if you didn't change this here. So we need to change it to 0 and 1,000 for our data. And then go to channel 2, check this box to enable it. You can choose your color and then set your limits there as well. OK, now the Y scale. Here we can set it up to show a Y scale label along the left side here of the chart. So we're setting the channel 1 as the main axis here. And that's all we need to do to set up this new trend display object. So we'll click OK and add this to our window. And then we'll just copy over our numeric display objects that we have configured for the watch line values. We'll see in a moment, but when you click on that chart, you'll see the line. And then it will copy the values at that point into these corresponding registers and same for this chart we're using different registers for that let's check it out in offline simulation mode okay so now we can see that if we click on the chart here that's what our channels read at that point in time we can click on the other chart and get the values at that point in time as well that's really all we need to know to set up a basic trend display. And in the original one, the only difference here really is that we use 30 seconds as the x-axis time range. And from the channel tab, we set a thicker line here. Later on towards the end of this series, we have a more advanced video covering more of the features and configuration of your trend displays including how to set up pan and zoom and how to toggle channel visibility and also swap the main axis that you're displaying on the chart. In the next video, we'll look at displaying historical sample data in a tabular format using a history data display. Check that out in the next episode.